Hello folks, I am back with a uh, firearms uh, comparison. I just want to thank those for my prior video. Uh, thank them, them for their support. It's been pretty much an emotional time for the last 24 hours and thanks for your responses. But it is 45 ACP month for me, so uh, let's get right to it. Right here it, you see two different um, 45 ACPs and what they both have in in common is they're both double action, single action. Um, that Both of these are safety check, by the way. This is the Six Hour P227 and 45 ACP. And this one is the HK45 and 45 ACP. They have some sim similarities and some differences. Uh, they've both been safety check, like I mentioned. And let's start with um, some of uh, the dip uh, the similarities one would be the decocker they both have decockers and i want to take the magazine out and it is safety check so you'll know and they both have decockers now you know that the six hour line they usually in their you know the double action single action uh series they have a decocker that decocks on on the side the side lever there uh the HK45, their decocker, I'm going to take the magazine out, see if you check again. Uh, their decocker is a little bit different. It works like a, uh, it works, has two functions. One, you can put the safety on like a uh, 1911, or you could just bring it down fully in a safe position. Uh, one of the other things is, uh, a, a, one of the big differences is this is a polymer frame and with the, with the steel upper. This is an alloy frame with the steel upper. Uh, a couple of a uh, few other differences. Uh, this has the E2 grip, which is a thicker grip. Uh, these came out a little bit later on if you had the earlier P2 to uh, sixes or the p227 uh this is a very good grip but it's a thick grip and it allows you for a good purchase especially when you have the front checkering uh the hk45 uh is known for the multiple back straps that you can use even though the grip feels a little scent, uh, feels a little thinner. It has kind of like a little bit of a palm swell that allows you to get a decent grip. And of course, there are finger grooves here, but they're not over intrusive like the uh, Glock series of pistols. They are both very good firearms, very accurate firearms. But I'm going to tell you one of the things that they are sometimes plagued with is especially with the what the SIG align is, is this uh, slide lock. Uh, I normally try to use the thumb forward approach, but you're going to see on my other targets how I got myself in trouble with that. Um, so what I had to do is revert back to my old training was have the thumb here and do a cross thumb. Most military uh, par uh, persons use the cross thumb up, uh thumb action or something of that nature instead of the thumbs forward because that increases your chances of getting a malfunction or in or not having to slide the lock back now with the uh hk45 the one issue i had was during shooting uh, my grip would be so tight that when shooting in single action i was pulling the decocker and it would and it would put the hammer in in um, double action mode, which is not really a good thing. Uh, while I have this here, this has these. Uh, this particular one has the standard Picatinny rail, which is the 1913, and this is the Sig proprietary rail. Uh, lights will work on this; it will fit uh, perfectly. But this is not your traditional. Uh, rail that you would see on other firearms. The sighting system is pretty interesting with these. Uh, this is uh, your normal SIG light night sights that are on here. Uh, they're pretty decent. They they do glow, but sometimes uh, 
they are plagued, SIG has been plagued with some of these uh, dying out after uh, having it for a while. But target acquisition is fairly decent. Uh, with these, these are what they call a luminescent sites. Now, if, if you bought the upgraded version, they, what they call the LE version, you would have uh, decent sites that were on night sites. But these have to be either charged by a certain light source, such as a flashlight, etc. Now, they both shoot very well, very, very excellent. Uh, but like I said, the feel is a little bit different. Recoil on both of these firearms are just negligent. You don't even know that sometimes you won't even know that you're shooting a 45 ACP, especially with this one, because it seems like everything is absorbed in here. Uh, for this, the pointability is really good when you're uh, using t uh, your targets. And I'm going to try to get in a position so you can see the lengths. And it's not going to be that difference they're both uh four inch barrels on both on both of these uh firearms either four four and a half if i remember correctly uh i'm going to show you some targets but like i said i had a few issues because of the slide lock i was in that was induced by myself but there were some decent things about the accuracy okay let's start with some of my targets here uh, this was at seven yards. So I'm going to move this one out of the way here. This was at seven yards. Uh, I did try to do a little bit of a warm up because I haven't shot these firearms in a while. Uh, this was at seven yards, and I think the targets with uh, with the Sig P227 went, did very well with this. But then I moved it back to ten yards, and I'm usually decent with ten yards. But this was the problem. The problem was, it, like I said, with that whole slide uh, situation, or I would inadvertently do something wrong. So it for 10 yards, it did okay, but this is not what I'm proud of as far as shooting-wise. I sent this out again about 13 yards, and again, I had some issues. And as you see, two of them went completely off the target, one just grazing right here. Uh, let's go over to the HK-45 on that particular target. This was 7 yards. And again, here it is right here. Now, this miss right here was due to, it went into double action because I pulled the, uh, the decocker down inadvertently. Going down again, this is over at 13 yards. Uh, again, I pulled the uh, the decockering lever and then hit over this end. Now, the shooting ability on both of these firearms, they are very good firearms for what they are intended for. Matter of fact, I use both of these for my home defense firearms uh, for uh, to protect my home. I usually put an O-light on either one of these depending on what mood I'm in. Uh, the trigger, the double action trigger pull, this was a horrendous double action pull. It was very horrendous. Uh, I kept playing with it, kept doing some dry firing, and it kind of like, it's kind of breaking in. But it, to me, it seems like it kind of stacks. But when you have it in single action, it works pretty well. Now, let me see if I can... See, like, it seems like I'm pretty much straining, and then it releases. Now, in single action mode, there's that little bit of take up, pull, and right there. It's not, a, the single action is really not bad. Uh, on this one, this is called the SRT trigger, not the short reset trigger. It is the short reach trigger. I don't know why SIG named them both with the same acronym, but this is what you call the short reset tr trigger. And it's made for people that may have shorter fingers or what type of hands, so you can be able to reach that trigger. And I think that's why the hook is the way it is. So when you pull this, it's a little, it's tight. It's, it's tight, but it still feels smooth. Uh, single action. That take up there, 
and the pull right there. Now, this pull is on single action is really nice. I think it's a little bit nicer than the um, HK45. Uh, uh, it It's kind of, when you shoot both of them in single action, it's, they're a treat. But once you start shooting both of these in double action, it's not as pleasing as you would think. So... This is the reason why I'm glad that they do have the option of putting this in single uh, action only if you want to. Uh, one of the other issues, uh, let's start with the SIG. Uh, the SIG in, in past history, uh, if you notice, this is a 10 round magazine and, th and th this comes standard with a 10 round magazine as well. SIG came out with a 14 round magazine, but there were so many problems with the tent, uh, with the 14 round magazine that SIG stopped producing those, uh, I believe, year, uh, year before last. Then they discontinued the P227 model altogether last year. So you could still find a lot of these. If you go to Gun Broker, there are a lot of these out on the market. I recommend getting this. Uh, it's MSRP was was at a thousand. You can get these three hundred dollars um, below that, and there are a lot of these floating out there, especially with the FDE. So I would recommend if you like the forty five in a double action, single action, to go get get one as soon as you can. And like I said, that uh, fourteen round magazine is not sold anywhere. I've tried to uh, try to check at uh, various places, gun mag warehouse. And basically, it's not listed. Uh, now, let's go with the H&K. This is a 10-round magazine as well, which comes standard. But they do offer a 14-round magazine. I had to order this separate from the H&K. Uh, and this works flawless for 14 rounds. Absolutely flawless. So, if, you're, if you have an HK, I... It, just get one of these, and let me just let you see what it looks like. Almost looks like a competition gun. Probably looks a little silly, maybe, depending on how you feel about it. But it make, it would make for a good backup. Uh, one other difference is traditional magazine uh, release. And as you know, this is the paddle. I don't mind the paddle at all. It's not a problem. Uh, other than that, like like I said, I mentioned the slide release is here, and this is the longer slide slide release. This kind of breaks down, similar to a, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe like a CZ or something of that nature. But one of the other things is, I'm not going to break this down. Unfortunately, sorry about that. Um, Inside here, you'll have a what they call a buffer inside here. It's a looks like a plastic buffer that's that's inside is about this long, and it helps dampen recoil. So maybe that's one of the reasons why the re, uh, dealing with the recoil on this is pretty good. It pre prevents that slamming effect when the slide goes back when it reciprocates with the uh, guide guide uh, guide rod and spring. So that works out very well. That's one of the good features about this. Now, which one would I pick for, oh, and if I could only have one. Uh, realistically, this is the cheaper and the best bargain if you are getting a 45 ACP. Uh, you do have a little bit more versatility with, with this one. I have more trigger time on the SIG type firearms. I'm still learning this platform, uh, learning uh, this particular platform. But like I said, I have more trigger time. So I would definitely would go with this if you would like something like this that is a reasonable price versus this, which can be upwards of 1000 to 1200 when it comes to your MSRP. But you can shop around and look around and you might be able to find uh, something uh, that would be comparable in price with this. So uh, 
that's it for basically my 45 ACP comparison. I hope you've been liking these uh, by 45 ACP month. I have one more comparison uh, coming up and I will not be doing any striker fire comparison um, versions be, uh, basically because a lot of people shoot uh, striker fires. I'm just going to put it out there right now. My favorite probably striker fire and 45 ACP is probably going to be the PPQ 45. I'm very impressed with that. So I've shot the Glock 21s and and a, and I have a 41 and I sometimes carry a Glock 30. But the most impressive one has been the been the PPQ 45. But as far as this uh, goes, you can't lose with either one of these as a home de home defense firearm. That's all I have, folks. So happy shooting. Stay safe. Hashtag 2A.